Welcome to Real Gardens. I'm in Guernsey this week and an extraordinary range of plants like this echium, a really tender plant, and some plants which are miles ahead of ours and others which are the same, very disorientating and wonderful. This week, Anne-Marie is on a watery excursion with Mike and Alison. I'm with our new gardener, Liz Colonnett, in her colourful garden in Guernsey. And Carol is on Operation Clear in Diana's garden as they finally get some of her plants off the patio and into the ground. Guernsey is 80 miles south of the Dorset coast, which is probably why it enjoys some of the best gardening weather in the British Isles. At first glance, Vale Pond House looks like a very privileged place to live. But when Liz and Rod Colonnette first moved in 20 years ago, the house was neglected and the garden was a wilderness. Since then, they've greatly improved the garden. They've restored the beautiful old greenhouse and a rather baroque-looking fountain. And they've built a gazebo, which overlooks the reed-fringed lake. The Colonnettes have three sons, and the youngest, Philip, who works on the island as a tree surgeon, sometimes helps out. But it's Liz, really, who does most of the gardening. I do a bit. I do a bit of the wall building and patio laying and... And you take out the bindweed, and, your and I, passion. Oh, I hate bindweed. I don't take out the bindweed. <laughs> but um, but he, know, he's this. actually not much good in a border. He do, he's not really very aware of the difference between flowers and She uh, doesn't have a weeds. very high opinion of, uh, of uh, <laughs> knowledge of, uh, of flowers for some reason. No, uh, funny that. No. Plants. <laughs> <laughs> The two-acre garden is divided into a number of separate compartments, surrounded by trees and shrubberies. It's sheltered from the gales, but open to the sun. So while the rest of us were still worrying about late frosts, Liz's garden was already well advanced. Her flowers were blooming, and her extensive vegetable plot was thriving. So how far ahead do you reckon you are to us, Mayman? I just think probably ten days or a fortnight in some areas. And is this a normal year? Very cold in the last three weeks, yeah. extremely cold. It will be normally warmer and very dry in the last fortnight. I don't know what this is. What is it? That's Scylla Peruviana. Beautiful, isn't it? Scylla Peruviana. Do you know, I've never come across that before. No, I hadn't before we came here. Did you plant that? No, that just appeared in the garden, in the wilderness of weeds and trees. So what was the garden like when you came? Was it all over there? A complete wilderness. There were no borders, no lawns, nothing at all. Just a few stunted rose bushes. So you like the asparagus, isn't it? I know, it pops Popping up everywhere. Up. <laughs> and that white flower, what's that? Is that... That's the Guernsey Star of Bethlehem. And was that here too, or did you plant that? No, I haven't planted it, but that didn't appear until a few years ago. So it must have been here. I love the idea of these plants just yeah, they arriving. Do. Amazing view. Glorious, isn't it? Yeah, we can sit and watch the birds to our heart's content. So this is where you come? This is with where we come, with a gin and tonic. Of right. course, yes. Right. What have you got growing up over here? We've got roses and clematis and this is where I want to put sweet peas going up the front. Nice in these, perfume in again. These containers. In these containers. And for a bit of interest, labelia in the front. All right. Then we have the smell and the look. We shall do it. OK. So did you grow these from seed? I did, yes. Um, Sowed at the end of December, uh -huh. ready to go out. And what colours are they? Mixed pastels. How many do you put in a container of that sort of size? I'd probably put five or six. We'll just really? see how we go. We'll see how we go. Okay. If they look a bit crowded, then we won't um, put too many. Oh, that's a bit dry. I know, absolutely bone, aren't they? Poor little devils. Look at the roots <laughs> on that. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> that's just produced a pretty good sweet pea. You're giving yourself lots of flowers for the house, too. Oh, yes, I love them. And quite a long season, really, isn't it? If you keep picking them. Yeah, exactly. I think four is enough, you know. I agree with you. Because they're quite bushy, aren't they, really? Yeah, and they need lots of goodness. Yes. So yeah. what do you want to put in front of them? We put the lobelia in front. OK, now these you didn't go from sea, did you? No, I didn't. I bought these in because we were away and came back too late to sow seed to get lobelia in time to flower. Now, are these all the same? You've got pale mauve there and I've got pink. Now, so do you want them all one colour in each or mix them up? No, we're going to mix them up. I'm just going to put this one on the edge to trail over here nicely to cover up this pot. So these will flower about the same time as the sweet peas? Oh, yes, they? Yeah. they should do. And then keep going. Get those watered in. Yeah, give them a good soak because the sweet oh. peas are dry. Now, that compost looks very rich, is it? It is rich. Yes, it's a mixture of um, horse manure and seaweed and my ordinary vegetable compost. Right. So it so should keep them going well during their growing they're life. They're going to want more water than that, aren't yeah, they? They're going to want a whole can each there. 
Fantastic. The gazebo is a fine place to sit in the summer with its lovely view of the lake, but Liz wants to open up the view from the back garden as well. So what are you doing up here? Well, this is where we're hoping to complete our Mediterranean terrace. It was an old building. And, and why is it Mediterranean? Well, I just fancy a Mediterranean feel. Uh -huh. Right. Something exotic. It's very hot. And that's where we spend most of our time sitting in the, in the summer. Uh -huh. That's where we do a lot of our entertaining. So we want a beautiful view over here. A beautiful view which is obscured by a great mound of bramble <laughs> and a whacking great big monterey pine. I know, I know, but miracles can occur, you know. Right. So I'm going to... We'll tackle the mound next time we visit, but first we must remove the lower branches of the monterey pine so that Liz can have a clear view of the water beyond. Now, it's far easier to do this when your son is a professional tree surgeon. Right, Phil, which branches do you want to take down? Um, I think we should start off with this one here. Uh-huh. Um, and just get, get the correct height, and then from there on, we'll, we'll go around the tree and selectively take them out. Do you trust him? Implicitly. There you go, you better get him. Well, <laughs> come on, let's get cracking. <laughs> After harnessing himself to the tree with a rope over one of the top branches, Phil is able to swing around the tree like a monkey. Phil removes the dead wood within the tree before taking out the bigger branches. This kind of treatment might look rough, but if it's done properly, it won't harm the tree. Monty, yeah. have some chocolate biscuit cake. Yeah. Are you going? Did you make those? <laughs> of course. That's lovely. Oh, you've made a tiny bit there. I'll do. All I'll right do. Then. Fantastic. Phil, shall I throw you up a bit? Can you throw it up? <laughs> yeah, I can try. I'll try the whole plate up. Yes. Hooray! <laughs> What do you think? A lot better, isn't it? Is there enough off, do you think? I think, I think there's, do you see there's a branch going down mm. there yeah. that needs to come off? Yeah, I think so. Phil! <laughs> Phil! The committee has met. Right? <laughs> and made its decision. It looks great, doesn't it? Beautiful. A but, real change. But I think uh, that branch going down slightly wants to come off. Yeah, this one. This that one, one here? Well, all of that. The all whole that, of okay. that. Okay. So fundamentally, the view is beneath the one that you're standing on. Right. Otherwise, it's brilliant. It doesn't take long for an expert tree surgeon like Phil to cut out the chosen branches, while the tree surgeon's assistant does all the tidying up. The tree has a better shape than before, and the view of the lake is already improved. Pretty good. Great. Has he done well? He, well, he has done has. well. He's Very earned impressive. another piece of chocolate biscuit cake. Yes. That's a lovely shape, and the vista opened up. Yeah. And I'll be able to grow things underneath in the border. Just so, what you want to. Now we've cleared that, the next stage is that mound, is it? This mound here's got to come out. So, uh, ready for action? Well, I will be next week after <laughs> I've had a rest and clean my hands first. I think you'll need a very large bar of soap for them. <laughs> Diana Harold loves nothing better than pottering about in her garden. In fact, she loves plants so much that she just can't resist buying them. The result is that she's accumulated a vast collection of plants which sit in their pots on the patio. I haven't a clue where the plants are going to go. If I like a plant, I buy it. I cannot understand people who say, I can't buy it because I have no room. It's a collection that's getting bigger. I'm going to have to address it. But I just can't resist buying them. A few weeks ago, Diana roped in her son and daughter to lay new paths in the vegetable patch. Even her granddaughters were enlisted to help plant out the new beds. In fact, the whole area has been completely transformed since Carol's first visit. Well, what a transformation! Isn't it lovely? It's totally different. You've got a potager. I have, and I'm very, very pleased yeah, with it. I'm not surprised. Do you like my stepping stones? I love them. And my times going yeah. through? Yeah, very nice yeah. idea. Yes. So you're going to have a scented path. And all this stuff that we put in yes. is... Uh, it's yes. flourishing, isn't yes. it? But what's been going on over there? It's fantastic, all this trellis. And... Yes, I wanted to make a barrier between the road and my compost heaps. Have you noticed my compost heaps? Yeah, I have. They're no longer those rotting towers, are they? No, some friends came and... Uh, 
help me. Oh, well, actually, yeah. they did it. <laughs> and I watched and directed. Yeah, yeah, you're good at that, aren't you? I'm very good at that. Yes. <laughs> Comes from being a school teacher, I think. <laughs> I'd like that trellis to be covered in climbers, different sorts of climbers, and I've collected a few. Never. Quite a selection to choose from, isn't there? I love climbing plants. I've noticed. Um, I think they give a lovely dimension to your garden. Yeah, I think lots of people forget about that, all that sort of vertical bit, don't they? In we go. It's quite a jungle in here, isn't it? I can see several honeysuckles. Yes, I'll take them. They might get giddy, you know, being moved <laughs> around like this after being here for so long. <laughs> You're so rude. <laughs> a couple of roses. And how many clematis? I think there's about nine clematis. Nine? Is that nine, all? Nine, I think. Don't forget your pièce de résistance. Here you are, just as gold. Yes, Isn't thank that you. wonderful? Wonderful. Before we plant up the trellis, Diana wants to replace the tangled passion flower, which scrambles up a wall on the south side of the house. Hmm, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it, really? Not a thing of beauty, is it, no. at the moment? By giving this passion flower the chop, we're freeing up a prime position, as the south facing wall will always be a few degrees warmer than the rest of the garden. Diana could put something tender in here. But because she's a rose fanatic, she'd rather use the space for one of the climbing roses in her collection. Gloire de Dijon. House walls are always a problem for the climbers that grow up them, because they keep all the rain off. That's why I've dug it sort of... Out a good, of it. Yeah, a good uh, 18 inches, 50 centimetres or so from the wall. But also this muck will retain a lot of moisture too. Looks a very tiny rose, doesn't it, for a yeah. vigorous climber? Well, it's it's not that vigorous. It's going to be about 12 feet, so it should be just about right for here. Mm -hmm. It's suitable and it's really important to choose a plant that's going to grow into the sort of space you've got. And when you put it in, just make absolutely certain that all this growth going backwards from the graft. Right. It's got three main shoots. So if you have one for the centre and one for each side and you just train them up first on canes, just tie it in loosely mm. till it gets somewhere like where it wants to go. Yes. And then make sure that that central growth you never cut back because right. that's going to go right at the middle of your wall. Diana's rose will soon be clambering up the wall. Eventually she'll put in wires to support it. One plant down, 23 to go. No, I think the thing with this sort of really strong trellis is it's the perfect home for some of these things that'll twine themselves. Mm -hmm. The honeysuckles will just go wrap themselves in and out of this. Yes. And then the clematis will throw their tendrils round the honeysuckle and round the trellis itself. Yes. Just it. When positioning the plants, yeah, we're thinking plants. about how they'll look together, yes. as well as making sure they're not going to smother their neighbours. Yeah, this is just a Belgica. Where do you want it? This end to? What's just a Belgica? <laughs> well, it's, a, it's not a fancy hybrid, right? It's going to be a vigorous, strong honeysuckle. It'll take off all over here and shoot out up your... Yes, I want my Montana well. at the end there. This one. Yeah, well, that can compete with anything, can't it? Yes, it's, it's fairly vigorous, isn't it? And it's lovely, this one, too, Diana, because... You're going to get a long season of interest with this, aren't you, with um, this beautiful, beautiful re red leaf? Yes. The soil's so fertile on this ex-compost heap that we don't need to add any extra muck before planting. The clematis are planted extra deep to help prevent clematis wilt. Let's twist its cane and just put it under there. And it's off to a flying start. Diane is putting this golden ivy on one side to plant up the arch at the entrance to the vegetable patch. Now that we've put in almost all the plants, Diana's compost heap will soon be screened by a combination of beautiful climbers. But Diana has her own plans for that archway. I've got a, a climbing rose here called Shot Silk. OK, where shall I put it? Well, we could have it, on, do you think, on the arch? And what colour is it? It's pink shot with scarlet. <laughs> yeah, oh, lovely. Oh, what? Ooh. With your yellow ivy? You're joking. That'd be lovely. No. <laughs> <laughs> really attractive. <laughs>
After the break, Anne-Marie is on a day trip with Mike and Alison in search of the perfect bog plant. Welcome back. This time of year, the herbaceous perennials are just shooting up. Things like these delphiniums are growing feet every week, but it's really important that you support them now before a storm comes along and flattens them. We're using canes and twine here, which works fine, but you can use other, anything else, pea sticks, metal supports, doesn't matter what you do, but get it in nice and tight, and as they grow up, that will cover it. By the way, if you're using twine, don't just use any old string. This soft green twine or brown twine won't cut the new sappy growth. And another tip, when you're using canes, drill out an old wine cork, put it over the top, and that'll stop you poking your eye out when you go to pick the flowers or do a bit of weeding. Now, Anne-Marie Powell has gone shopping again, this time in Stockport with Mike and Alison. Alison Buckley and Mike Woodall first began tackling their neglected and boggy garden in Stockport earlier this spring. Even though neither of them had any previous gardening experience, they've already made two raised vegetable beds with Anne-Marie Powell's help. On her last visit, she helped them to build a boardwalk, which leads down through the boggy part of the garden. And since then, fired with enthusiasm, Mike and Alison have gone one step further by building a sun deck at the far end of it. But there are still no plants. It's another muddy mission for Anne-Marie. This really finishes it off, doesn't it? It's built in the same style as the boardwalk, inspired by, if you like... Well, I'm just... glad I'm... <laughs> something's rubbing <laughs> off anyway that you like. God, Dead easy that's... to build, dead simple. Do you know what I'd have? Go on. I'd have a hammock. I really would. I'd have a hammock across here and then just loads of bean bags and just keep it really, really relaxed. Just bring them out when you want them. Oh, yeah, we'll have one of them. <laughs> I tell you what, though, you've got this gorgeous field just here, haven't you? And yeah. You just can't see it, so I think you should nick that view. Get rid of some of this hawthorn here, this crotagus. Lop it back and just, you can admire the view. It's like a window. Brilliant. It's a nice idea, yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, I yeah, love it. Well, you can do it then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just cut off what you think's in the way, really. Wow. <laughs> the farmer's going to go mad. You know, moo cows will come in. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> I think that's a dead bit. <laughs> right, come on. Follow me. Don't look yet, right? Come on. Okay. Don't look. Don't look. Now look. Oh. It's nice, isn't it? That's fab, isn't it? Put a nice hardwood frame in there. Some leaded glass. <laughs> Oh, lovely, that, won't it? We should start to think about some plants, shouldn't we? And you've obviously had the same idea, haven't you? Dug it over. Yeah, dug it all over. Yeah. It still looks quite weedy, though, no disrespect, but it does. And some weeding. Let's get going on that. We need to get the fork down further into the soil, because if we can't get into it, what chance have plants mm. got? <laughs> but you can see that it is quite damp here still, and it hasn't rained for... About two weeks. Really? Yeah. What plants do you think should go into it? Things that will put up with that horrible muddy quagmire that we've had in here so far. Bog plants. It's bog country, isn't it, really? You always seem to get an idea, don't you, when someone says bog plants? A bit boring. And a bit... Do you think so? I do, A bit yeah. bland. God, do you know, I would love to have a bog garden. <laughs> this will be like a bridge just floating amongst this sea of big architectural plant and leaf shape. You've got a wild imagination, haven't you? <laughs> And I need to fire their imagination. There should be plenty of inspiration at nearby Stapley Water Gardens. Hey, yeah, Mike. Here's a feature to feast your eyes on. That's what I call a feature. You're cheeky doll, not having them in my garden. I know that Alison is yearning for a bit of colour, but I want them to see Stapley's wild garden to see if any of the plants there appeal to them. So, tell me honestly what you think of this. It looks a bit overgrown. <laughs> bit rough. It's like something you used to have at school, didn't it, when you used to go and collect your tadpoles? Like, do you like the plants? Things like this, the marsh marigold, cowser. Does it have a flower? Does it flower? Yeah, yeah, you can see one there, actually. It's quite big, yellow flower. Yeah, it's uh, quite nice. What about that over there, the prehistoric-looking gunnera? Can you see it? Yeah. It's quite a... Like a rhubarb. Yeah, what do you make of that? Yeah, I like that. It's different. I don't know whether I do. Don't you? <laughs> No. Well, I think this bog garden's going to be a disaster. <laughs> Stapley specialises in aquatic and marginal plants, 
some native, some more exotic. So there's plenty here to choose from. Just <sighs> what do you reckon? I think these are gorgeous. I love them. The leaves are fantastic, aren't they? Reduce your escafolia. You get these big leaves coming out like that. I love it as well. Yeah. Is, it, is, that, is that the one with the black stem, is it? Well, there's two of these. There's the Ligularias. They're both Ligularias, and that's Dentata Desdemona. And it has these sort of daisy-like bright yellow flowers that come up off it. Yeah. And this is um, the rocket. It literally throws up, pretend it was on the floor, it'd throw up a, a flower spike that big. So, oh, and that's yellow as well. And what did they grow spray. that big? Yeah. Well, I thought they were just small plants. Everything seems to be yellow. Shall I tell you why? Go on. Because a lot of these plants have yellow flowers. <laughs> <laughs> a white harem lily will add some variety to the mix, but Alison still wants some colour, so she's choosing Lobelia Queen Victoria, which will have bright red flowers. She also likes the look of the feathery red astilbe. Come on, then. Back at base, the sun is high and our thirsty plants need a drink before we put them into the ground. I'm a bit worried about you not liking these plants, you know. Well, I'll be honest with you, they actually look better now than what they did before. Oh, so. God. So we'll see how it goes. I'm pleased you said that. <laughs> I thought we'd plant this gunnery, though, first, or at least place it. I think you need to put it right there. So I have to clear all that brick because it likes it really, really nice and meaty in the okay. soil, lots of food and nutrients. Is that going to fill that corner? It'll grow massive. It'll just really end your whole bog garden, you know, right. with a bog monster, if you like. We have to resist the temptation to place okay. things too near okay. the boardwalk or it'll soon okay. be submerged what beneath foliage. These. This is ornamental rhubarb and yeah. it'll soon be enormous. Now for my favourite bit, the planting. We'll start with that Ligularia. Because these are marshy plants, bog plants, you still plant them in the same way as you would a normal herbaceous perennial or a shrub. Dig a hole, stick your compost in, add some bone meal or fish blood and bone, stick your plant in, water it, watch it grow. That's the theory. What are you standing about for? Do you think I'm going to do it all? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, wishful then. thinking, mate. Come on, a spade. They may look small now, but in a few months' time, the boardwalk will be surrounded by a jungle of large and colourful plants. You still need to put some sort of mulch on there. Bark chippings would be ideal just to lock in that moisture. In. And it's a good idea to put gravel all around the outside of the plants that the slugs might like. But this is the most important thing. I love it. It really gets you to see your plants and what's going on with them. <laughs> I reckon you should do this. Yeah. It's time you got to know them, innit? Yeah. OK, thank you. That's it for this week. Next week, Anne-Marie is up in Stockport with Mike and Alison and Carol is down in Devon with Adrian and Debbie and I'm back here with Liz and Guernsey and also it's Chelsea Flower Show week so we're going to be taking all our real gardeners down to London to show them an inside view of the RHS's most prestigious show. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>